Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. Thankfully, my internet is now back on, so we're we're good to go. We're ready to do some very cool things. So today I'm gonna be showing you a very, very cool technique, and this is called Layer Shader. It's a special shader that we're gonna be able to use to layer different materials in a single shader and create some very interesting uh, textures. But before we do that, we need to model something real quick uh, to, to better uh, show you what uh, or how this thing uh, works. So what I'm gonna do is I am saving an image off camera real quick. You'll see it in just one second here. There we go. I'm gonna go to my front view and we're gonna be modeling a light bulb, a very simple light bulb. So it should take us about five minutes. Let's let's give it a shot. Let's count the time. Let's see how fast we can do this. Um, and, and here we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the with the like copper piece right here. So I'm just gonna start with a cylinder. I'm gonna make the cylinder really, really big so that it fits roughly the, the size of this thing. Now this one right here stops right about there, I would say. That's like the highest point. I'm gonna grab the lower faces, control E to extrude them, and bring them all the way down, and then scale them down to create this sort of shape. So now we have the, the basic shape of the of the connection to the to the light bulb. Let's push this image back there. And as you can see, we have this like sort of a screw. Now uh, here we can of course try and do it uh, in like a spiral sort of way, or we can just like simplify it and have just like very simple uh, rings. Since this is not a modeling class, I'm just gonna do like simple rings here. I'm just gonna grab this, this, and this. Bevel all of those edges right about there. Grab all of those new rings that we just created. Control E to extrude them. Oh come on, Maya. I've been having some issues with the extrude tool for some reason. I'm not sure what it is, but every time I do control E and I try to move it, I've had this like crash several times. And I know some of you are gonna be like, this one happened in Blender. I know, I know. Maya is not good. It is good, it's really good, but it has its issues, of course. Let's just go into the task manager real quick. Let's kill it, kill it, and let's open it up again. The, the good thing, or one of the good things that I like about Maya, especially that um, error that I've been encountering, is that it sometimes saves the progress. So it, it kind of saves all the way until you crash that thing on the on the extrude button. Um, but yeah. I'm, le I'm learning Blender, by the way. So yeah, as you can see here, there we go. So let's save this real quick. Let's save this. Save. I'm gonna be le learning Blender in the next couple of months. Maybe next year I can do a little um, a little tutorial for you guys, but because right now I'm I'm just a noob. I'm just a noob. Where am I saving that? No, oh, I want to save it there. Save scene. Let's set the project real quick. You know, usual stuff. Sorry for the. Uh, sorry for the two extra minutes. There. there we go. So let's try it again. So this. This guy, this guy, and this guy. Control E. And we're just gonna extrude out and offset a little bit. And I'm gonna grab this guys. Control E, extrude in and offset a little, a little bit as well to create a little bit of a, of that effect. I mean, that's fine. I missed one phase there, but that's fine. It doesn't look bad. There's a couple of extra lines in here as well. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add them and use the element here to soften them up. Maybe like, I don't know, bevel them a little bit. I'm not being super precise on the modeling section because this is just a, a quick demo here. The one thing I do wanna create here is the um, the little like border. So I'm gonna offset here and then control E again to extrude this in, there we go. And to keep this edges sharp, I'm definitely gonna bevel them. Two segments and a small fraction, and we go. There we go. So that looks good. And we can add more lines, but that's fine. Now for the light bulb, I'm gonna do something very simple. Some of you already know this trick, but I'm gonna use an EP curve. I'm gonna start right here on the border. And I'm just gonna trace the light bulb. If you guys have our uh, intro to Maya course, we have a very nice exercise where we use this tool extensively. Some of you already know which one I mean. If you don't know, check it out. Check the description here on the on the video. And usually there's a promo code in there for you to to make use of. I'm very proud about that one, the Maya, the Maya 2020. I was 2020 because 2022 was not out yet. 
when, when I was recording. Uh, but it's, it's pretty much the same tools. Like you can have any of those mice and it's gonna be fine. So this guy, I'm just gonna go into the form, uh, sorry, uh, surfaces, and I'm gonna do a revolve. Uh, I'm gonna say polygons, uh, center fit, okay, hold on, general, per span, per span, and boom. We got this thing right here. Now the only thing that I missed was the triangles. We want the squats and apply. Apply. There we go. So we delete history here. Very important. You can see that there's a couple of like weird vertices over there. Just grab all of them, merge to center. Should be fine. And uh, yeah, we have this very nice uh, shape right here. Now for the trick that I'm going to show you, for the thing that we're going to do, we definitely do need... Um, we definitely do need uh, to have a UV. So I'm gonna keep it real simple actually. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna control E to extrude this thing because I do wanna have a little bit of thickness. So let's go in. Now this object has thickness. I'm gonna go mesh display, reverse, and let's UV this real quick, super, super quick, very easy. I am actually just gonna go UV, 3D cut and so UV tool. Oh, it actually already has a cut there. Fancy, I didn't know. Let's do and unfold. Yeah, that works fine. Now I'm just gonna make sure that this is vertical, vertically aligned. That's what we need. And uh, like this. It doesn't matter that the UVs are overlapping right now. That's that's fine. We can we can deal with this. It's it's not it doesn't need to be perfect. Just like that. There we go. Now here's where uh, we're gonna start the the class. Well, one more thing. We we just need a uh, like a coil inside of there. So I'm gonna go to like, uh, let's do another EP curve and let's just create like a very, like a very wonky curve like here. Just to make it crazy. There we go. Now I'm gonna go control vertice, press B, which is uh, self-selection so that we can push some of these points in and we get a little bit of a, of a three dimensional uh, shape. Just a little bit nicer. It's V on your keyboard to create this thing. Now remember the, the tool that we've been using, the, the sweep tool. So create, sweep mesh. You can see that sweep mesh right there. That's fine. I'm just gonna uh, make it smaller like this. And there we go. So we can delete the curve. We have the sweep mesh, which is looking nice enough. I'm just gonna say mesh smooth. And there we go. So we have three pieces. We have a bronze piece or, or I don't know, tin or something. I don't know which metal it is. We have the coil, which is going to be uh, shining, and we have the glass. Now, for this one, well, well, let's do a quick uh, light setup. So I'm going to go Arnold Lights, uh, Skydome Light, and we're going to use an HDR here just to make sure that this looks nice. So I really like this decor shop. There we go. And let's, of course, create a new camera. Panels, look selected. And we're going to have this oh, this uh, shot right here. There we go. So if we take a look at the render right now, of course, everything is going to be solid, which is fine. I don't want to see the image plane. So on the options on the image, I'm going to turn off the camera all the way down to zero. Now, this one, we're not going to use later shader. We're just going to use a basic shader. So I'm going to go Arnold, a standard surface. The color is going to be like this, like dark bronze color. Uh, I'm going to increase the IOR so that when it shines, it starts shining a little bit more. And we can even change this thing to, again, to like a like a gold color there. I think this is definitely way too saturated, so let's desaturate a little bit. Let's go to like the yellows. That's better. Now, of course, we could bring this thing into, into what's the word, into substance and texture it properly, but I think that's perfectly fine. I'm actually gonna increase this to like a five or something. Uh, and I am going to increase the roughness just a tad bit so it's not completely new because we want things to be dirty. Now, for the glass, here's where fun is going to start. I'm going to go into the hypershade. I'm going to clean this thing. And instead of doing a, a normal AI standard, I'm going to look for an AI layer shader. And the way the layer, the layer shader works is it has eight different inputs, eight different layers that you can use. You can combine up to eight materials into the single thing. 
And one of the flexibilities about the layer materials or the layer shader is that there are certain shaders or certain materials that shade or, or need to be set up in a specific way to get the best result. And if you try to mix that material with another material that has a different setup, then it looks a little bit weird sometimes. So for instance, whenever you have a character that is wearing, let's say, uh, or you have just skin and you paint in like a, like a metal strap, the border where the metal and the skin begins always looks really wrong because you're trying to shade the same material with two different properties, two different physical properties. And here's where later shader comes into place. Now, I believe this only works in this way inside of uh, Maya, so it's only for like commercials and cinematics. Uh, but the Unreal and Unity do have something similar that you can use uh, by masking things out. So the way this works is I'm gonna go into the input here and I'm gonna input an AI standard surface over here. And this AI standard surface, I'm gonna call M glass. I'm going to turn the weight all the way down so we don't we don't have any color. I'm going to turn the roughness of the of the glass down as well so it's very shiny and the transmission we're going to turn it all the way up so that we have transmission. Now, if we assign the um, the AI layer shader to the to the glass and we render, we're going to have a glass. You can see it through the glass. Now, of course, we're seeing the refraction of the of the thing. We don't want that, so I'm going to go here and in the transmission I'm just going to turn it off. So we only see the, the light, bulb, light, bulb, light bulb itself, which is what we're going for. And you can see, we can see through the thing. Now, if we wanted to add a dirt layer, it will be very difficult to shade this material as glass and as dirt because one of those materials is uh, transmissive. So you're going to see through it and the other one's opaque. So you're not going to see through it. So this is where, or this is one of the examples where, where this effect comes into place and it's, it's really, really useful. But before that, I need to download a dirt mask. So I'm just going to go for dirt mask and let's grab whatever I can find. Something, something simple. Like this one looks, this one looks really good. Has a little bit of a, I think this one looks better, I think. So I'm just going to download this. I'm going to save this image. Source images is fine. Let's just save that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my hyper shade and on the AI layer shader, I'm going to go to layer two. I'm going to enable it and I'm going to connect a new material here. Now here's one of the very cool things about this. You can actually connect like the like the full substance materials. Earlier today I downloaded a substance material, an SVSR file, which is just like a dirt. So if I go here and I load, we've seen this before where you can load the materials directly and it connects all of the shaders for you. So I have this dirt and gravel. It's gonna say open. I am gonna say um, create shader network for Arnold, and this will create a new AI standard surface. This one right here. And we can plug this in directly into the input. So all of the connections, all of the maps, all of the things that we normally have are gonna be um, are gonna be working now inside this layer shader. Now, right now, the layer shader is saying that the mix of the layer two is set to one. So if I were to render, what I'm gonna see is that the dirt is pretty much overriding the glass. You can see it right here. Now, yeah, that texture is very, very bad. So I'm gonna go into the place to d texture. Let's repeat the UVs like four times. That should give us a little bit more resolution. So it's, it's going to look a little bit nicer, a little bit more like dirt. And right now, since the mix of my layer shader is set to one on that specific layer, we have, uh, we're pretty much overriding the glass and having only uh, this effect. But here's where the mix comes into place. The mix is a mask node. So zero to one, if it's white, it allows the thing to go through. If it's black, it, it does not, it blocks it. So in here, I'm just going to add a new Maya texture file. I'm just going to write here texture or I think it's called a file, a file. And I'm gonna use, of course, the new one that we just downloaded, this one, it's gonna say open. So now we're using this mask that we just got from the internet and this will mask out where each thing is gonna be. Or at least that's what it should do. Uh, it's a little bit weird. I think it was really, no, it was black, so we should be seeing it. Did I mess up something here? Probably did. Let me check. Uh, let's go here. I'm gonna change from sRGB to to raw because it's a it's a utility. And uh, yeah, I mean that's weird. It should be working. Uh, oh. Let me see where this thing connected because. This does not seem normal. Okay, we 
we have the texture here. Oh, yeah. So as you can see, it's it's outputting the the color, and we don't want that. So it's the alpha. Now the problem here is it's trying to do the it can't output because this is RGB and this is a float. So I'm just gonna select the R key and I'm just gonna output the R color, which is the pretty much the same. And now you can see that certain areas of the light bulb will be dirty. You can tell them there and some of the other areas won't be dirty. So we're gonna have a very cool effect here where, where we have a, a mix and match of different materials that are gonna be interacting in a very, very, very cool way. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for the layer material. You can layer, again, as I mentioned, up to eight materials to get a very nice effect. And as you can see, now the glass looks a little bit more uh, like a dirty glass. Now, of course, we can push the values. Um, I believe this, there was like a, like a histogram that we could do here. Uh, I said levels, no, adjustment. Let me see if I remember which one it was. There's one that we can use to, to change the, the colors a little bit. Is it the color correct? Yeah, we have the color correct here. So what you can do is we can bring the in color here. And then again, from the out color, we can go here. And here on the on the color correct, we can play around, let's say, uh, let's change the alpha offset, and the gamma. And let's see how that looks. And not much of a difference. But yeah, you can get any texture you want, guys, from the internet. And, and depending on how you paint the texture, you're going to be able to blend two materials together, which, again, very, very cool. Now, finally, just to finish this render and have a very nice uh, presentation image, I'm just going to select this guy. I'm going to say Arnold Lights uh, Mesh Light. Let's say a 10 exposure color temperature and a very low color temperature. And let's give it a shot here. I'm going to say uh, Light Visible. So we can see the, the little coil there. Probably increase the intensity to like a 15 or something. There we go. Now let's look at that thing. So now that we have a little bit more light, you can see how it's very obvious that certain areas of the light bulb are reacting properly to the noise or to the dirt, and other areas are, are kind of like blocking the whole thing around it, right? So, so that's one of the great advantages of this uh, technique that you will be able to combine several materials into a single material and they will behave physically correct. Rather than trying to play around and making sure everything works the way we want, this will actually work in the in the way that it will it would on the on the physical world. Uh, so that's it, guys. Just a short video for today going over this. If you have any more ideas of what other things you want to learn, please let us know in the comments so that we can take that into consideration. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about a face topology, which is something that a lot of people have been asking about. And um, and yeah, after that, uh, let's see what else we can uh, come up with. So leave us a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye.